Welcome to the Potter Blog site. It's Tuesday, November 15th, 2011. I'm going to try to keep this video short. Uh, there are other videos that go into further detail on this, on this subject of the uh, European iodine-131 detections and how they may be indicative of atmospheric plutonium-239 concentrations. If you go to the uh, Potter Blog site, Pissing on the Roses blog spot, uh, we'll have a link to all the previous discussions we've had about this possibility. Uh, in essence, we've uh, predicted since April that uh, solar coronal mass injections would impact the Earth and interact with uh, high atomic weight Fukushima fallout, both radioactive and non-radioactive, in the upper atmosphere. And that this would cause a witch's brew of uh, radioactive iodines to fall out. And it's, it appears as uh, this is, might be what uh, has happened here. And what's interesting is, is it was actually reported to be the case uh, early on. And November 12th in the Daily Mail, there's a report here where uh, the uh, detections in the atmosphere are actually blamed on uh, intense uh, cosmic radiation and powerful winds. It says they're believed to be the cause for the detections in the atmosphere. Now, somebody probably should not let that slip because of what this really means. Now, they're not talking about uh, uh, iodine coming out of the sun. Basically, they're talking about the high, uh, high relativistic speed particles, protons, and electrons shooting out of the sun, hitting the earth, and slamming into the fallout, and creating spallations, which uh, produce... Uh, more neutrons and protons that go out and hit other things and cause more radioactive elements to form and fall out. Now we've been predicting this since uh, April and on October 24th we had a uh, very unusual uh, case of uh, northern lights here in the United States that were visible down all the way into Mississippi. Uh, they were unusual in that they weren't expected uh, they were, well, they were expected to be uh, Mars bound, but they had a massive effect on the Earth. And they arrived early, or their impact was felt early. And also, these bright red lights, highly unusual. Uh, this type of uh, uh, northern lights hasn't been seen since the uh, nuclear testing in the 1950s. So, what brought our attention to this is. Uh, Shortly after these, this uh, Northern Lights on the 24th, we were asked how that might uh, affect, uh, what effect that might have on the planet, what we would look for for these iodine spallations. And one of the things we predicted would be that there would be a step function jump in detections across the globe that could not be readily explained via other means. Now in reality, the, the strongest impact is on the sunlit side of the planet. And on October 24th, uh, Eastern Europe was just coming into the sunlit side of the planet. So they would have had the strongest impact from this uh, solar storm. However, this solar storm has been going on for uh, uh, quite some time period, on and off. And I guess I don't have that up. But uh, in the, uh, the space weather has been uh, this, the solar... Storms have been hitting since October, early October. They've been coming on and off, uh, with the biggest effect being October 24th. Now, what's interesting about these detections is, other than this early report uh, tying them to the uh, basically the solar winds, uh, nobody's been able to, at least nobody in charge has pointed out to where they're coming from on the ground. And the reason is, is because they need to look up for the source. Now, the scary thing about this is uh, the specific detections of iodine-131. You know, there, there's just so many things that can spall out in the atmosphere from these, but uh, iodine-131 and some of the other things that they're detecting. And here's a, uh, a map here, or a list of things. This is from Slovenia. Uh, in Slovenia, they've detected iodine-132, iodine-131, cesium-134, cesium-137, uh, cobalt 60. So these are all fission products. And if we go to uh, Finland, let's go up here to good old Finland. Here we go. Now in Finland, you'll actually see they're detecting some spallation, uh, cosmogenic created spallation products, uh, sodium 22 and beryllium 7. These are expected to be created from the process we just described. 
And uh, I think the, the sodium-22 comes from uh, solar particles sliming into argon in the atmosphere. And actually, it's a lot rarer than uh, beryllium is. So it's interesting as these relative levels. But we'll also see cesium-137, cobalt-60, uh, ruthium-103, iodine-131, uh, cesium-134, ceruleum, I think it's ceruleum, 144. Now this is a very prolific, plo, I can't say, prolific uh, output of a fission process. Uh, Terillium 132, this spawns iodine 132, so this is very short half-life stuff. And uh, so there's just a whole host of stuff in here that all just screams fission and it screams uh, very recent fission. And if we look at this, and we look at these detections, and I'm scrolling through a lot of them, but you have Finland, uh, Norway, we have some here. Again, Norway dete detects the cosmogenic particles. It, it just goes on and on, but some of the better ones have a full list, like you can hear like Slovenia of detections. These detections scream to us here at Potter Blog of a, uh, basically, uh, a solar neutron uh, hitting plutonium-239 in the atmosphere. And again, this would be a spallation product, and basically what you have is occurring is plutonium fission in the atmosphere and creating this fallout over a distributed area. Now, if we look at a, a jet stream map, uh, down here at the very bottom, this is the North Pole. And if we go over here, orientate myself, uh, the gray lines are the uh, jet stream high, st high speed winds. So here we go into the Mediterranean. Here is uh, Italy. And then we come up here to the Nordic countries. And what you'll notice is if you see the dates, and this is running just in the first part of November, we have a jet stream basically coming out of the North Pole, uh, slamming into uh, the, the Norwegian Finland, and coming down into uh, Slovenia, and it's basically what this says to us. This, the further north you go, the more likely one is to experience a spallation because of the uh, magnetic lines of the Earth. So this looks like it's actually pushing spallation products uh, from the North Pole down towards uh, that part of Europe where it's been detected. Uh, either that or Santa Claus has a nuclear sub that's gone bad up in the uh, North Pole. So this is, it's all very interesting. Now there's not enough data to say all this conclusively, but it's very interesting that people have, it's, somebody in authority has already pointed it out to the Daily Mail, but it's been squashed, it looks like. But uh, again, the scary part of it is, is it's, you could possibly be able to back calculate from this how much plutonium-239 is actually in the atmosphere to create this type of fallout over Europe. So it's a, uh, it's a very interesting case. Now, your grandchildren and maybe your great-great-grandchildren and all so forth, uh, they will thank us for taking the hit of this iodine-131 because uh, if it's in fact uh, solar spallation is hitting plutonium-239 in the upper atmosphere, it's in, ex in essence cleaning some of the high atomic wave fallout out of the upper atmosphere. Um, we'll take the hit genetically, but uh, maybe it'll be a little bit better for the Earth. Now, because of the plutonium-239 aspect and it, it being in the atmosphere, you know, as we pointed out on our blog site, you know, they're more likely to, to blame uh, some uh, Jägermeister in Germany uh, deer hunting out of his tree stand, some poor guy with thyroid cancer taking a leak off the tree stand and the wind picking up the iodine. Uh, what I would call the... Uh, Zwei Bayern and Ovalt scenario, but uh, I don't think anybody will ever publicly admit to it uh, being uh, plutonium-239 in the atmosphere. Now, as I was going through this data, however, there is an alt maybe a potential alternative explanation, and it just crossed my mind seeing this cobalt-60 detection here. And if we look near Slovenia, and where we might expect this, this fallout, especially this cobalt-60, would be from a, uh, a, a can-do type reactor. 
and I think they're only in Romania. I think there's only one set of uh, Canadian reactors in Romania. So that would be another outlier potential. But were that the case, one would think that would have been pointed out by now. Anyways, interesting times. Good evening.